of you know, we, we usually have a blanket handy, a pillow or a bolster or a block sometimes comes in very handy. And tonight we are going to do some stuff would be very nice to have for some arm work. But it doesn't have to be a strap. It can be anything. It can be a towel that you're not using around and see if you have stuff that you can just put by yourself to uh, help yourself be comfortable. On our backs today, so um, we'll give it another minute, but what I usually do when I'm gonna get it situated on my back is put a little padding, make sure you're comfortable. Feels good, just so I'm getting even a little bit more class. Uh, and just let the floor begin to support some release in that back and the shoulders. Tuning your breath and just let this nice supported bent pose just begin to relax the back into the floor. We're actually going to try to give quite a bit of emphasis to our breath tonight. Most of us need to de-stress a little bit and the breath is one of the best pathways to that. So first just let the breath <coughs> settle in, let the belly soften so you can actually feel the inhale starting at the belly. Relax the surface of the belly, let it balloon out. The inhale. Just a little contraction on the exhale. Don't let the belly stay soft. That contraction is pretty deep. It's actually the diaphragm just rising up and emptying the lungs. So take a minute to just find your breath. Release the thoughts and images of the day. And sometimes this is the best yin we do. Just stopping the activity for a moment. thoughts and images fading into the background. So our attention is just on our breath, just on the sensations in the body. Making a sort of little bubble of self-care right here on the mat. Our, our first pose is going to be Happy Baby, which is the one where we bring our knees towards the chest. But you let the knees be a little bit wide and try to find a good place to hold on. For some of us, that's going to be just on the back of the thighs, just holding those knees in, beginning to release the lower back. And find your ankle. That's a good hold. But one of the most secure holds is actually to reach up to the feet if you can get that high. A little bit of arm support, pulling those knees down to the outside of the body. You can move a little bit. Sometimes it feels good to roll side to side for a moment. A very nice massage for the kidney area. Some of the meridians in the back body. But eventually, you want to find stillness. You just 
try to find a way to hold yourself quite still and breathe. And this has to be posed for a couple of minutes. You might feel the rhythm of the breath here quite, quite nicely where the exhale helps you release the knees a little bit further. So we say stillness, but we don't actually mean everything is static. There's an internal rhythm. Letting the breath help release the stiff areas that are being stimulated in this pose. And it might be necessary to adjust. Like sometimes I start out a little deep and I realize I'm holding on a little too tight. I might change my grip. Might help release the shoulders to come down a little bit. Take a little variation of the knee squeeze. Where we cross our ankles, you can just take your right ankle over your left. Either way works. We'll do both sides. And see if you can, maybe your head comes up. See if you can grab the outside of the feet and pull in that way. It's going to change what's getting stimulated a little bit. Usually that this moves a little bit into the side hip area. What we really want to do here is do a little rocking motion, a little vertical rock with the back. So the feet come up and down, up and down. See if you can let the floor massage that back along the spine. With this little roll. couple times like that and just switch the ankles. We'll change the stretch in your hips a little bit to have the other ankle on top and roll. Spinal massage. And on this side we're gonna increase the roll enough. Hopefully you can find a way to sit up. So we'll be sitting up in a little cross leg position. Now we're going to stay here for a minute working our shoulders. So if this isn't comfortable, it's just hard to keep your back lifted, go ahead and sit on something. Sit on a block or a pillow. Whatever you need to do to get fairly comfortable. Your spine's just straight and relaxed we can work our arms. We're going to take whatever you have to hold on to and actually this can be done without a strap if your mind is a strap. I'm just going to warm our shoulders up a little bit. But if you have something to hold on to, let your palms be forward facing toward the ceiling and we're going to try to find a width where we can come up and behind ourselves. Now, I usually start out kind of optimistic when I have to get wider to make that happen, depending on how tight our shoulders are. You just want to come up and over. Back to front. And the goal is to keep the elbows fairly straight. When you get to that kind of sticking point, just slow it way down. Rather than bend the elbows, just 
slow it way down. Even if you don't go all the way back, you'll get a nice, nice opening in the front of the shoulders. Back and forth a few times. I'm not used to working with a mirror, and of course the camera's a mirror, and I see that I'm kind of not, not equal. I have a curved spine, so it's very easy to get kind of lopsided. Just straighten out if we can. When you come to the front, we're gonna do that again. This time we'll change our palms to being down. It's gonna change the, the way the cap of the shoulder rotates. So find a good width, something that you can come up and behind yourself, nice and slowly. There's my sticky point. Just Hunched over, putting a floor down. And you even just holding the arms out, even if you don't have a strap, you can get a lot of the benefit stimulating the shoulders. So if you started without a strap, sorry, you can grab one or Just do it without a strap, sort of mindfully opening the arms. Now this time, palms down probably works better for this one. We're gonna come straight overhead and bend the elbows on purpose this time, as far behind the back as you can, as if you could touch your shoulders, up and down. So we're using this isometric tension in the arms to really bring a lot of energy and release to the shoulders. Good. Let that strap go for a minute. Just roll the shoulders. Hopefully they're feeling nice and warm, forward and back. Little shoulder rolls. And we'll do a little side bend. Um, also for shoulders, but very much to, for the side rib area. When we breathe, we tend to breathe in kind of a narrow channel. We want to expand that channel so it includes opening the side ribs. This can really be a nice stretch. Take your left or your right arm overhead, lean so you're in this C shape, and see if you can find a maximum lift and stretch in those ribs. Get a lot of stretch if you keep that shoulder sort of back. So you're really coming directly to the side as much as you can. Even looking up a little bit can help really open the high part of the lung. And just switch over and do the other side. You might be further down, you might be all the way to your elbow. And just work it and breathe. Nice and open. And just to counter stretch a little bit, just let the body come forward. We won't hold this very long, just a little forward bend. And 
lifts it up and knee back on the hands. Press into the hands and lift the chest. A very gentle back bend before we come to our first long held posture. Breathe, see how the breath really is a little bit constrained. If you can still bring the breath down to the belly. Nice warm spine. Okay. This first posture is a quarter dog. We call it. Um, we're going to start on our knees. Really kind of an all four position. And hips are aligned over the knees. Take your right arm and Come down to the elbow on that arm. This is, this is the, just the holding part of this pose. It's really going to be opening the left shoulder and lung by lowering the chest down and trying to find a place where we can hold for a couple minutes. Now, some people can come all the way down, even kind of in front of the arm, forehead to the floor, or maybe you're on your arm, or maybe you're on, your forehead's on a block. But stretch that left arm forward. Let that shoulder get that strong opener on that side, and breathe into that shoulder for a couple minutes. So in the end, take all the time we need to sort of find what's going to work. You don't have to fidget too much. You can just breathe and release into that shape. I usually start on my forearm and then work my way lower if I can. Very strong shoulder opener. But not just the joint, it's also stimulating the rib and the side lung getting the air, the breath to go way, way high in an area of the lung that we might not use in our everyday breathing. out of it, just let that left arm come back, maybe take a minute to rest that shoulder and curl the toes and give yourself a little toe stretch in between sides here. So I've just got my toes curled under, letting my body come down, help open the bottom of those feet. And stay leaning forward. Put total body weight on them, or even lean back a little bit. Why not going to let me do that today? But whatever it takes to really stimulate those feet. The shoulders are just relaxing for me. And we'll do the other side. Quarter dog. So the hips are up over the, over 
the knees. Left arm, if you're doing the same side I am, is perpendicular under the chest. And that right arm is going to try to find a place to stretch the long, maybe the body weight, the chest, sink down to the floor. It's some place that you can hold for a couple minutes. Don't be at all surprised if one shoulder feels a lot different than the other one. That's just very natural. Depending on what side we use, you know, the way we sit at our desk, or any kind of curve in our spine, we just use the sides a little differently in our normal life. Just the way it is. Actually feeling how the body feels here and how the breath can be used to just relax and release what's tight. So you're actually working the whole time. And we can't see everybody real well. Hopefully everybody's found something that feels kind of comfortably uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I need this. Not too deep. But stimulating and effective. That's our two minutes. So ease yourself out of that pose. Come back. And just in between, we're working our feet, ankles a little bit. This time we'll do an ankle stretch. We try to flatten the feet against the floor. For some people, this is super easy. For others, not. But super easy. Lean back and lift the knees and get some stretch in front of those ankles. It's not so easy. You just find that nice, intelligent edge of, okay, that's a stretch. And breathe here. Four or five deep breaths. Kind of stretch out the front of those ankles. in kind of a V, the other foot up by the groin. Now, if your knees way up in this position, you can just not worry about it if it's not painful or you can support it a little bit so that it's not giving you too much stimulation. So if you can find some way to sit in this half dragon fly shape, so it's sort of a little, if my leg were straight, I'd be in a V. And we'll, we'll do some hold, a hold here, quite a, a long in hold. But to start, I'd like us to twist the spine a little bit, get the spine warm. So whichever leg is bent, walk yourself around over that leg 
There's a nice straight spine. Find some place to hold to help assist you. Spiraling the spines as if you could look straight behind. But you don't want to torque the neck. You just want to work that spine. Lift the spine. It's going to engage back muscles. You'll probably engage your leg as well. I'm just going to breathe here a few times. Be nice and tall. Into this next breath, just release the effort. We'll try to twist around this, towards the straight leg. Same idea, straight spine, the hips are grounded, meaning we're not trying to lift either hip. We're gonna see if we can straighten the spine and look around the other side. Inhale, you might feel the spine get nice and long. The exhale, you might feel the spine able to move a little bit more around that center axis. Just a few breaths here. This is a yang version, a muscle strong version of what we're heading towards. And then release the effort, but hopefully the body's can release over that straight leg. So here's our forward bend, our held version of this pose. We walk ourselves down that leg, trying to keep the sternum straight over that leg. Find your edge, and then release the spine. This is the yin version of this pose. We're gonna let the spine relax, wave the body sink, probably feel something like your head is aiming toward your knee, unless you're very open, your head may be past the knee. You begin to release all the muscular effort. got a hold. Don't be aggressive with the hold. Just breathe yourself long with that leg. When we come to stillness, we're going to hold this for a couple of minutes. So the work in the pose is just continually releasing past your edge. Deeper and deeper, although deeper may be almost imperceptible. It's just something you feel inside. Maybe not visible to an observer. If you're having to hold your head up, there's another place you can use a little support. A blanket or a Walk or bolster on your leg it might help support the head. You're not having to hold anything, You're just sinking, sinking into the pose. practice to release muscle. I, I've been doing it for quite some time. I still find about halfway through that I'm holding my thigh a little tight or my ankle a little tight. You just progressively learn to let go.
20 seconds. You may have had enough and just when you're ready, use the hands to help support the back, lift the body up. And just stay in that very open, that very released state of having to lift yourself. And of course, we're going to do the other side. In between, we try to bring some circulation back to those deep muscle connective tissue that we just or sometimes you have your favorite. I like to just bounce my legs a little bit. So I feel like everything's flowing again. And just set yourself up when you're ready for the other side. Again, don't be surprised if the sides are different. The side may need a little support. Maybe the other side didn't. Maybe you're knee needs a little support. The leg doesn't like being totally straight. It can, st it can be soft. A little blanket or towel underneath might help. Or you, some people learn to work very nicely, getting all the benefit of the pose with a, with a slightly bent knee. So give yourself time. We'll do those little twists. We're going to start twisting against the bent leg. So I'm using my back hand behind to support the spine long. Using the front hand to find a place to hold and lift and spiral the back. Looking behind myself, you don't want to crank your neck, put a little bit of tension on the neck to look behind and feel very good. Just a few breaths in this strong version of the pose. And then let go. Mindfully make your way to the other side. Lift the spine. Breathe it around. to twist before forward bend sometimes because I do have stiff hips so being over this leg is actually a little bit of a twist for me come over the leg and prepare for the yin version begin to release all the muscles in the leg thigh muscle ankle and just work your way over the leg. You sort of find that edge of I can't go any further without really pulling something. I don't want to pull. Just want to find the edge and then release the back. And release the weight of the body. Letting gravity do the main part of the work. Just the weight of the body. And the shape of the pose. Being what effectively opens the joints, the tissue, gives that decompressing stretch of the body. Always come back to the breath. Staying with the breath and making sure you're not holding or tensing the belly. 
It's one of the key elements in men. Sometimes it even feels good to consciously give a deep exhale, audible exhale, kind of triggering that relaxation response. Just exhale, tension out. Give ourselves plenty of time, so inch by inch, release out a deep stretch. And do whatever feels good to bring a little bit of movement and energy back into those legs. You may have a favorite, I'm gonna recommend a little windshield wiper that's just Bent knees going side to side. Easy, slow movements to neutralize the hips. And to neutralize our back, let's just do a down dog, yin style, we call it lazy dog. Come into all fours and curling the toes and lifting the hips. Maybe keeping the knees nice and bent. Just so you can have plenty of movement in the body. Do a little metal check to see where it where you need it in your arms or your legs. Walk the dog. Hmm. And drop to your knees. After forward bend, we're gonna do a um, our back bend series. We do this almost every week because it's so healthy for the spine. We're gonna come into a sphinx and seal. And we just start on our bellies. Sometimes a blanket under the hips helps them be comfortable. Just gonna let our back decompress. First in the Sphinx pose, where the elbows in this upper arm are support for cradling the back in a little back bend. Everything else in the body is fairly loose. So just like maybe a little wide. Buttocks relax. The only tension is sometimes pressing the elbows in the forearm to the floor. Elbows a little bit back towards the waist. The longer your spine is, the more it can arch. Comfortably between these holes and holding this up. Right here, just let the neck hang if it needs to. Or 
like the elbows and come down, come back into it. And then I count about 10 nice long breaths here. Give yourself a couple of breaths. If you haven't already lowered the pose, just let the elbows slip to the side. Let the upper body come to the blanket, to the mat. And we're just gonna lie here for a little brief rest. I like to make a little pillow with my hands, kind of stack the hands. Let the one cheek rest on the hand. So the neck and let go and release. Do a little passive stretch. It's impossible to completely relax the spine in a, in a back down like this. But the muscles will contract. You usually don't hold these super long. But we'll repeat the back bend. And either Sphinx again, if that gave you plenty of arch, or if you're ready to come up a little bit higher, we actually do the seal version where the arms straighten out. And we rise up higher or lower depending on how close our hands in, are in. This is gonna bring the peak of the back bend a little lower in the back. So you don't wanna compress the lower back too much. It's actually quite healthy to do it in this Nice, controlled, slow way. Slowing that low back arch. Very natural to contract the buttocks or the legs. It's a kind of a reflex to protect the back. But once you feel safe, start letting that muscular tension go. to the other side and just do absolutely nothing for a few breaths.
sure your head turns the opposite way that you had the first time to get equal, equal stretch on the head. Go ahead and lift yourself up and our next pose is a squat. People who know me know I'm kind of big on squatting, which is not so easy for everybody. So this might feel like a counter pose, a nice release of the back, or it might feel like the hardest pose of the night. But what what we're aiming for, if you can see, is to just squat. If the feet can be flat, no matter how wide you need to get them, this, there's no better way to release the back than the squat. But not everybody can get their feet flat, so you may be comfortable just staying up on a little bit of a heel up squat, still very healthy for the back. Or you may want to support your feet a little bit so you can get comfortable or, or get a little bit more support in the squat. Now I like a kind of a strong version of a loss in a squat where I'm actually pulling my knees wide. That might not work for you. You might want to keep your hands on the floor to let the peak part of the pose be more of a low back release. You can just kind of stay in any kind of rounded version of this pose. It can also help to hold on to something. If you're in a, if you've got something to hold on to, like a chair or a bookcase, you can't see everybody. That can also help stabilize you. We don't want to force our back to work too hard here. We're actually going to um, do come into a forward bend from this in and out so if you're super happy in the squat stay there like I say I know that for some people squatting is a very strong pose and to release it you can just lift the hips and just dangle forward let the hips release a little bit the feet can be more parallel and just let the back hang this way a little bit more of an inversion. Wiggle the hips. It's still very releasing for the spine. What I usually do is kind of in and out. A squat. For a few breaths. And lift and dangle. Maybe enjoy feeling the release you're getting in the back of the legs here too. Just in and out on your own. It works for you. Wherever you are, I'm going to come back to a seated position eventually. So just make your way. I'd like us to come into child for a minute. So 
for most of us, that's sort of an easy way to release the back, release the hips. The arms can be curved back by the feet, or they can stay a little forward with soft elbows. You want everything let go here. Not holding yourself up any more than you have to anywhere. Just breathe in that belly down position. Hopefully you can feel the breath in the back body. And widen in the mid back to the shoulder blades. Go ahead and sit up. Um, I think we did this last week, and I know this saddle pose can be hard for some people's knees. So where we're headed is to sit with our hips inwardly rotated. So you're, you're trying to find a way to widen the feet let the hips come between the feet. That may not work for you. Some people can have their knees fairly close together. Other people are going to widen and some people are going to just need some height. Fully sitting between their knees is just too much. So you're going to stack whatever you need to so that there's not too much strain here. And once you are convinced that you're not putting all, any undue strain on the knees, you're just going to come back. The hands can be supporting the back, or on your arms, or on your elbows, or all the way back onto the floor if that's okay for the knees and the hips. So you're gonna pick your height with this internal hip rotation. The full saddle all the way back or to the floor will actually be a, a, a low back bend as well. For most of us, we're gonna feel it as an arch in the low back. Oh, I'm sorry I can't see if that's too much. There's also single leg versions. You might be able to get one leg to open up in that direction. It's healthy for the knees, healthy for the ankles, and it's a bit of a, it's a quad stretch too. So this is very classic in pose, this saddle. Opening all those joints in the lower body. Especially if you're in the full pose, you want to protect your back, use your arms, you want to protect your knees. I like to usually come back to a more easy version of a hero's pose. 
and then just let the buttocks come to one side. We're actually gonna come to our back. So just take all the time you need to get out of it nice and safely. Come onto your back. Take a moment in a constructive rest. Just let the feet be wide maybe mat width or even a little wider and let the knees sort of hang together. No effort, you're not really pushing, you're just letting them find their rest position here. Just for a few breaths, I'm not gonna hold this a long time. And then we'll do the opposite. We'll let the feet <clears throat> meet together, kind of a reclined butterfly. Let the knees open up. Give yourself a nice little knee squeeze. So both knees come together, find a good hold. The hands wrapped around the shin works for many of us. So release the hips, let the hips neutralize, let the back release. A little movement side to side. Massage the back. We're going to make our way to Shavasana. So, whatever feels good to you, hopefully, you're warm. You can dim your light. Sometimes it feels good to have a little bit of support under the knees. just want to find a way to let everything, the whole body, mind, everything release. Arms a little bit out from the body, palms up for most of us. If that's not comfortable for your shoulder, I know there are a couple of people with shoulders that don't really like that open position, just rest the hands on the belly and feel the breath. complete sense of relief. time with ourselves, so things get easier over time. Maybe not easier physically, but you just know more and more what, what it is your body needs. So be patient. And trust in the process. Passionate to yourself.
and then you're ready to take a little bit of a deep inhale you can roll to the side and just sit up nice and gently slowly to just take a minute to sort of feel how you feel and thank yourself for taking the time to nurture yourself we're going to close with an arm nice deep inhale Namaste.